Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Lenny. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about online and retail arbitrage. And if it actually works and all the pros and cons with it, I've been watching a lot of videos of other people claiming to do it and claiming to make a lot of money. I've actually tried it for many years on and off and there are certain ways that you can make it work. But I'm mainly going to talk about those people that tell you that they go to a store um, and they find a bunch of product and then they buy it and they just flip it on Amazon for a huge profit and it only takes them two hours to make a thousand dollars. So that's what we're going to talk about. So make sure you subscribe to the video, drop a comment below if you have a question and uh, let's get into it. You see a lot of videos about this. You see a lot of guys, they go to a store like a, like a Macy's or a Costco or a Target or something like that and they find a bunch of product and they're scanning it. They're like, oh look, I can make 10 bucks on this. I can make 20 bucks on this. And then they tell you that they made $1,000 with only two hours of work. So I'm gonna tell you guys the truth. I'm gonna expose the truth. I'm gonna tell you from my experience how it actually works. Now, I don't claim that I know everything about it, but I've definitely tried it a lot of times. I tried to make it work. And as you can probably predict, it doesn't really work exactly how they tell you. There are definitely ways that you can flip products online and you can buy low, sell high, but it's not necessarily that easy. It doesn't happen that quickly. You don't necessarily make that much money and it's not a very sustainable business model. Here's typically what happens. You find a product, let's say it's $10 in the store and maybe you scan it or you look online, you look on Amazon and it's selling for $30. And this doesn't necessarily have to happen at a store. You might find it on another website online uh, and then you know it's selling for 30 on Amazon and it's selling for let's say 10 on this one website. Don't forget about tax. So you're gonna pay some tax on it. The next thing is when you're selling something online, there's always seller fees. Either you're selling on Amazon, on eBay, anywhere. You're gonna pay anywhere from 10 to 20% just for the privilege of selling on the website. You have to subtract that right away. Then you have your shipping cost. So shipping can be a killer completely. Even small little things, you're probably looking at at least seven, eight dollars minimum to ship the product. So if you calculate everything, this $10 product that you probably paid, let's say 11 for with tax, then maybe 15, 20%, maybe that's another two bucks. So you have $13 in, and then maybe it's like seven, eight dollars to ship. So you're around somewhere 21, $22. Doesn't sound bad if you can actually sell it for $30, but you, don't necessarily sell it automatically just because there's a price difference. So $8 is okay if you can maybe get, you know, 10 of these or 20 of them or 50 of them. And that's a whole other thing. Where are you going to find that much product where you can just straight up scoop up at a store? Usually they'll have a few floating around and um, people usually buy them up. There's not necessarily a whole shelf of like hundreds of these products that you're just gonna scoop up and then expect to sell the next day. And remember, you have to travel, okay? You have to find these products, you have to search for them. Either you're looking for them online or in store. You're either going to the store, you're looking around, you're scanning, you're finding these products. It takes a long time to find something that's quote unquote profitable. Same thing online, you're doing a lot of research, you know, it takes time. So consider that with this whole business model. You put in a lot of time to find products here and there. When you do actually buy the products, you're investing money up front. It's not like you're gonna buy one here, sell it, then buy another one and then sell it. You're either gonna buy it or, or not. So you kind of have to commit, you're kind of taking a risk. And once you buy it, it doesn't mean that you're gonna sell it. So a lot of these, um, you know, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, uh, people on YouTube tell you that just put it on Amazon and boom, you're just going to sell it. It doesn't necessarily work that way. First, even if you have an Amazon account, which is a hurdle to get through, it's not, you don't just create an Amazon account and start selling. There are limitations and you need to build up the account. You need to get some feedback, some reviews. 
nobody's just gonna buy from you and you're not gonna have access to be able to sell all these products. And you can easily know that because as you watch these videos of these other people making these claims, they'll tell you that they're gonna sell Adidas sneakers or Nike sneakers or this product or this product. And all you gotta do is just go on the product page and see all the sellers that are selling it. If it was that simple, you'd see hundreds and hundreds of sellers trying to do it. And that would obviously completely kill that business idea because no one would ever sell anything. You'd be one out of like thousands if it was that simple. But what you usually see is you see maybe five sellers, 10 sellers that actually are selling it. And that's also competition as well. If you're a newer seller or you can't necessarily compete on price as much, you're not gonna be in the buy box, okay? And the buy box is basically when a customer clicks purchase, that's the seller that sells the actual product. And there's maybe five or 10 other sellers that are just basically hidden below that don't sell the product. And sometimes the, the buy box, um, it variates. So there's a new seller that pops up. It depends on different things on the algorithm, but mostly it depends on price. So whoever has the lowest price will usually be the one in the buy box and will usually sell that product. So as you can imagine, there's insane competition on price. Once you list something, the other two guys or girls or whatever, they're gonna start competing with you on price and it's just a race to the bottom. So you might get away with selling one or two products, but then the next day they're gonna lower by a dollar and then another dollar and you're just gonna kill all your profit and now you're sitting on all this merchandise and you're already at best would be making, you know, seven or eight dollars. And that's like on a good day. And you have to remember also that just because you list it on Amazon doesn't mean you're going to sell them all really quickly. You have competitors, you know, you have demand and products don't always sell right away. And usually once they're selling for less in a store or on a different website, eventually the market catches up. So you might catch a product selling for a low price one day, but usually after a few days, people start noticing it, other sellers uh, start competing, and the price is just gonna start going down and it's gonna match that low price. So you really have a small window to catch that profit because eventually the costs are gonna catch up and it's just gonna be that same price online everywhere that you paid for it initially either you know at the Costco or at a, another website. So that's pretty much how it works. And to get to another point, you can't just sell anything on Amazon. You have to be approved. You have to supply a lot of paperwork, even if you're lucky enough to be approved. And you can always run into problems. Actually, eventually you will run into problems. If you're trying to sell brand names, you're always gonna have an issue. Somebody's always gonna say, I don't like this product. They're just gonna select a random reason. They're just gonna say, it's not authentic, this is fake. And eventually, sooner or later, your account is gonna get shut down because you're competing with other sellers. What they can do is they can buy from you and they can claim that you're selling fake product. And sooner or later, it's just gonna happen. Your Amazon account is gonna get suspended. You're gonna get into problems. So it's not a sustainable long-term model. Remember, you have to go out and source these products. That takes a lot of time and it's not a long-term business model. It's basically one-offs. You're always going out to a different store or looking at a different store online to find something new. So it's not something that you can just find one product and always keep reselling it because if that product is gonna sell out, the price is gonna go down and you can't make any profit or you're gonna to get too much competition and you're gonna be priced out. Now, it doesn't mean you can't make this business model work. You just have to have the right expectations. It's not a long-term sustainable business model. You always have to do a lot of work to find these products and you're not guaranteed to sell them right away. Your profits are probably gonna keep decreasing uh, every single day that you have this product and the profits are probably very, small to begin with. So just have the right expectations if you wanna try this. It can work if you're interested in a certain product and you know a lot about it. So you can always spot deals and you can sell one here and there. But if you're expecting to make a lot of money from this and do it long-term, this is probably not the business model for you. 
So if you want to learn more about e-commerce, entrepreneurship, business, service businesses, anything like that, check out some of my other videos and I'll see you guys next time.